Hi guys, in today's lesson we are going to be learning some <gasps> maths. As an intermediate learner you should already be very confident when it comes to counting in English, but I'm going to teach you how to discuss more complicated statistics. First of all, let's talk about fractions. Fractions are a way of discussing a whole number which has been split into equal parts. We write them with one number on top of the other and a little line in between them. The bottom number is called the denominator and this tells us how many of something there are in total. For example, if I cut a whole pizza ooh, into eight slices, then there are eight slices in total and the bottom number, the denominator, would be eight. The top number is called the numerator, the numerator, and this tells us how many pieces of something we have. So if I cut a pizza into eight slices to share evenly between myself and three friends, I will have two slices of pizza as will all my friends. Therefore, I will have two out of eight slices of pizza or two eighths. If I take a whole pizza and cut it into two slices, then I would say I've cut it in half. If one slice is for me, then I eat one half of the pizza. But if both slices are for me, then I eat two halves happily. Notice the difference in spelling, a singular half, but plural two halves. Sometimes when we discuss fractions with a numerator of one, so one is on the top, then we will drop one and simply say a, whatever the denominator is, or an depending on whether it begins with a vowel sound or not. For example, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, an eighth. So just to make that clear, we use a when the following word begins with a consonant sound and we use an when the following word begins with a vowel sound like e. Eight, eighth. The first few examples in the sequence are said quite differently to how you would say the individual number, which is the denominator. For example, instead of one over two, or one, two, <laughs> you would say a half. Instead of one over three, you'd say a third. One over four would become a fourth and one over five would become a fifth, a fifth. After this, they become very easy. It's simply the number with a th on the end. Now remember when making the th sound, it's important that you put your tongue between your teeth. So for example, you could say four eighths, five tenths, nine fifteenths, ten twentieths. When you take the denominator and add the th, sixth, seventh, eighth, these numbers are called ordinal numbers, ordinal numbers. Now you probably notice that while we use those ordinal numbers with the th endings for the bottom part of the fraction, we still continue to use cardinal numbers for the top part of the fraction. Ordinary numbers, how you would normally say them. So six eighths or five ninths. Are you still with me? I hope your brain's not frazzled. If it is, pause the video, go and make a brew and come back. If not, let's carry on. Okay, when you have more than one whole item, in this case, pizza. Then we're going to connect that whole to the fraction using and. For example, we still have one and a half pizzas left over from the party last night. Mm. 
or I've already drunk four and a half glasses of water today, though I'm aiming to drink six. Or the recipe suggests using one and three fifths of a cup of flour. <sighs> Moving on, let's talk about decimals. Hmm, get the pronunciation of that right. Decimals, decimals, not decimals, decimals. When speaking, we use the word point in place of the decimal point. For example, I might say 3.2, 5.6, 7.8, and so on. If the first number is a zero, then I could say 0 0.2, or I could say 0 0.2. We would never say nil 0.2, so just zero or naught. Now, if you have a two or more digit number before the decimal point, then you would speak the number as you would speak it normally. For example, this would be 35.9 or 26.7. However, if you have more than one number after the decimal point, then we say all of these numbers individually. So we wouldn't say, 0.25, instead we would say 0.25. Other examples would be 7.65, 8.29, and so on. Let's put this to the test. So how would you say these numbers? This one would be 98.06. How about this one? 17.17. And finally, how about this one? 99.439. Finally, let's talk about percentages. This symbol is pronounced percent, percent. You may see it written as per cent, which is the Latin for out of 100, but often we will push those two little words together to make percent. The correct way to discuss percentages is to read it as it is written, with the percentage symbol coming after the number. So for example, we would say 10%, or 28%. 100%. You can also have a decimal point as part of a percentage. For example, 15.9%. 99.9%. So close to 100. So to summarise, if I'm going to split a pizza with a friend, I will have half of the pizza or 50% of the pizza. On the way to pick up the pizza, I'll drive at 29.5 miles per hour, just under the speed limit. I'll eat three slices for dinner and save an eighth of the pizza for lunch tomorrow. So there you go. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or you'd like to practice what you've learned, then please feel free to put a comment down in the comment section below. Now, if you're new here, hello, welcome. It's wonderful to have you. Don't forget to click subscribe and the bell notification for more English lessons. Until next time, guys, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you in the next lesson.